For years, I was named a bird, but would not fly. I didn't want to. You see, Mohegan actually means wolf people. We're wolf clan, always have been from way back. Wolves don't fly. They don't need to. My Mohegan wolf family was really all about staying put. Like they wouldn't leave, like at all. As elders, my uncle Tom and Aunt Gladdie stopped leaving home altogether. They were terrified that if they left, they might die somewhere other than on Mohegan Hill, which like, let me be clear to my family, is the worst thing that could happen. Our medicine relies on being home, being where our ancestors can look after us. Aunt Gladdy, medicine woman Gladys Tanaquidgen, was a living legend. She founded Tanaquidgen Indian Museum at the height of the Great Depression with her brother and father on the idea, it's hard to hate someone you know a lot about. Together, they protected our stories and other sacred relations like pipes and baskets within the museum, where it was warm and dusty and always smelled like good medicine. But you see, outside of Mohegan Hill, to be native in Connecticut is basically to be told every day you don't exist and decide whether or not today's a day it's worth fighting about. As a kid, my mom or other Mohegans would show up at my school to intervene and make sure our history was being taught correctly. But now, as a teenager, my mom is constantly reminding me it's now my responsibility to fix things. If I falter for just one moment, so you're acting white. Are you a white person now? No, mom, this is your responsibility. You know that. Did your ancestors sacrifice for nothing? No, mom. So on those days when my mom makes sure I go and tell my teachers to their face that I will not be handing in their assignment on Manifest Destiny from the settler's perspective, but will in fact be writing a paper on Wounded Knee so they learn something, I take comfort in knowing no matter how much trouble I'm caught in, I can escape to Shakespeare rehearsal and be someone else. Oh, Romeo. Romeo, wherefore art thou Romeo? Deny thy father and refuse thy name, and I'll no longer be a Capulet. You know, normal teen stuff. And in Shakespeare, I don't have to worry about making a mistake or saying the wrong thing. It's already written. I just have to speak what's been handed to me. And it sounds really good and makes people think that I'm charming and funny and smart. When I speak Shakespeare, people listen. So teen me splits my time between performing for a local Shakespeare company and working for my tribe. I'm at the tribal offices updating some Mohegan language documents with one of our elders and my mom, who, after Aunt Gladys' recent passing, is now the newly appointed medicine woman of our tribe. We've been working to restore our language, but with no living, fluent speakers, it's a complicated reconstruction process, relying on written documents. I love our language and stories and have been finding phrases in Mohegan to include in plays we're creating with the Mohegan youth. The elder I'm with suddenly stopped short. Wait, what's your name? Sagayo Jeets, Blackbird. Huh, the dark one who flies apart. Sagayo. I was named after Jeets Bodanasha, Flying Bird? No, no, that can't be your name. There must have been an error in the translation. No, no, that's, that's my name. That's, that's been my name my whole life. No, mm -mm, no. Sagaya would be the conjugation for the inanimate. An inanimate blackbird? So I'm dead? My mom jumps in. Oh, you know, that kind of makes sense, actually. The bird you were named after was dead. Mom, what? I told you this. No, you definitely did not tell me this. You definitely did not tell me I was named after a dead bird. You told me I was named for birds flying in and out of the house when I was born. Yeah, and one died in the house. Then your Uncle Tom had to pass because we all knew somebody's spirit had to go with the bird and we were all worried it would be you because I just had two miscarriages. So I'm a dead blackbird. No, no, that's not how the language works. The elder brings us back to the reality at hand. You can't even put those two words together. It wouldn't mean anything at all. She opens the language dictionary to find the right word for a living blackbird because our language was killed and has to be resuscitated, apparently just like me. She looks, they find the word. Both the elder and my mother suddenly start giggling uncontrollably, completely unconcerned by my growing desperation. What's so funny? <laughs> the word is so 
sucks a cock. What? Sucks a cock. They find this very amusing. Sucks a cock, jeets, that sounds like a porn name. Why would you name me that? There has to be another word. They look, still giggling. <laughs> a choke ice? That sounds like a sneeze. Well, it's better than sucks a cock. 